Hello everybody, welcome back to Crypto Atlas and in today's episode we got a couple different key things we're going to be talking about. Bitcoin, we're also going to be talking about a little bit on Orchid and the update, what's going on with that as far as the technical analysis goes. I'm also going to be introducing you now to Loopering, which I have not previously talked about and why I'm going to be talking about that as well as with Band and OMG. So a lot of different information, but if you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button, guys. We're on the road trying to get to a thousand subs. And for more information in the cryptocurrency space, would definitely love for you guys to come back and hopefully be able to share that with you. So if you guys did not already know, I am not a financial advisor. So everything I'm saying, take it with a grain of salt. Look at it as a form of entertainment. I highly recommend that you guys do further research outside. But aside from that, let's go ahead and get into what I'm looking at, what I've kind of analyzed with all this. Bitcoin is just below $10,400. We're seeing on the daily, it's down 0.75%. So a little bit of a drop here. I'm looking at this on a one hourly chart for the second, not for the moment, <laughs> that's what I should actually say. It's the ascending wedge pattern that's uh, showing right now, which is actually more of a bearish indicator. We're gonna see a potential of it having a further drop down. A lot of people are very skeptical about what's going on in the market space. But aside from the one hour chart, looking at it from a short term perspective, because we did have that big drop down there just earlier today, we do pull back on the daily here. And you can actually see that as we scale out long term, Dating all the way back from around March, we see very clearly an ascending wedge pattern as well. And the RSI is pulling dangerously close to being oversold. We had a major drop back in March. Um, I personally have been feeling like there's a setup for a dead cat bounce. It's just taking a bit longer than normal. And that's because of what happened with the stock market back in 2000 and in 2008. They both had dead cat bounces. A lot of people feel that the stock market is has been way too overvalued. And so the recent price drops that we saw could only could potentially be just the beginning of a further decline down. So we want to keep an eye on this support line here, uh, which is trailing based on where we're at right now. If we're looking at it on the daily, it's going to be right around the nine thousand nine hundred dollar range. But more specifically, Definitely keep an eye out on 10,000. If we drop below 10,000, next major range of support is gonna be right around 9,700. That's the price range for where the CME futures contracts gap is at. And historically speaking, about 90% of the time, that gap has actually been filled. So you do wanna keep your eyes peeled. A lot of the price action movement that's been going on with some of these other coins has been a reflection of what goes on with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's dominance is not as much as what it has been in the past, but it is still the king of the cryptos. That's something definitely to keep in mind. So uh, as far as for some of the indicators that we're taking a look at here, I went ahead and highlighted this for you guys. As far as like the long-term holders go, they're not really shaken up with what's been going on. As this is quoted, coin days destroyed or CDD is an indicator for movements of large and old stashes of BTC. Currently, it is showing no signs of long-term investors cashing out. In fact, CDD is less than half compared to last year when Bitcoin was at the same price level. So it's definitely some interesting information to show you right with that. Now we're talking about a lot of people Having sold off though, and a lot of people are also holding. Well, some key figures, one notably, Peter Brandt, he actually just recently sent out a tweet in which he said, clarify, not sure I understand. Personally, I exited almost all my portfolio in the last two days. And he identifies specifically stocks, Forex or foreign exchange and BTC, AKA Bitcoin. So in process, moved assets back into home currency, USD. So a lot of times what happens in the market, right? People look at gold as a safe haven asset. And this has happened in the past too. And it happened in March. When the stock markets are all tanking, you don't see Bitcoin or sorry, you don't see gold have this huge rally right away. What ends up happening is people take their money out and they want cash on hand. They're kind of evaluating what's going on with the market whether they're going to put it back in or not. If they see the decline in the value of the dollar, a lot of times they'll then put that into the safe haven asset because they feel like things are starting to fall apart. 
Additionally, some other news to share with you guys. Vitalik Buterin, I believe that's how you say his last name. I, I actually never really paid much attention to his last name, but um, apologies for that. But I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Buterin. Anyways, so this is the guy that made Ethereum, right? And what he said on Twitter, to those replying with gas fees are too high, my answer to that is, well, then more people should be accepting payments directly through ZK Sync, Loopring, OMG. Seriously, scaling to 2,500 plus transactions per second for simple payment applications is here. We just need to use it. And essentially, what this kind of is entailing, I just realized I should have had this on dark mode. I look like a ghost. Essentially, what this is uh, saying is he's supporting ZK Sync, Loopring, and OMG. So, Loopring, interesting little tidbit that I came across, and this was totally unintended. They sent out a tweet just a couple days ago. Loopring Exchange now features fiat prices which are updated by Band Protocol's price feeds. And if you guys may recall, I actually had talked about Band Protocol in a previous video. And it being one of these leading competitors facing off against somebody like Chainlink. Right? They have slightly different applications, different perspective views, uh, but there's a big competition in the similar space between the two and Chainlink has actually got a much higher market cap, but Band Protocol has a lower circulating supply. So for that reason, the price point from a, an investment standpoint, you could potentially have a higher percentage yield return on Band Protocol if they actually start getting momentum. And this is something showing that there is more integration with Band Protocol and it's something for you guys to just keep in mind. This may play more of a role long-term down the road. Looking at Loopring's price, though, more further information, even with that kind of a news on the daily, we saw a point, uh, negative 3.29% drop. Overall, in the last week or so, we've been seeing a slight increase in price, but for the last 24 hours, it has had a bit of a drop. They describe themselves as an open protocol for scalable non-custodial exchanges on Ethereum. Let me go ahead and close out some of these so I can just kind of get myself on track here. They were talking about OMG, correct? Well, I happen to notice on Coinbase that as far as for what they were saying on their time frame window, OMG was up quite considerably. In fact, if we look over here on this chart, you can see OMG is being listed on TradingView at a positive 7.38% gain. According to Coinbase on my phone, for their 24 hour period, it's up 28.44%. 28 over a quarter per, uh, of their entire price increase in just a single day their rsi down below the relative strength index is in that little kind of hot pocket zone it's not overbought it's not oversold anything above this line just fyi is considered to be over uh, overbought anything down below this line is considered to be oversold so they're like right in that median zone pushing right around in 51 52 and also something to keep in mind is that the actual moment is right on the cusp of the 20 EMA. We would ideally like to see that be above. That's going to be even more of a bullish indicator. You can see it's starting to rebound with the market, everything, and started to drop, like literally, literally everything. I covered this in the video yesterday. If you didn't see that, I highly recommend you go check it out because I talk about Tesla, Apple, stock market, gold. I talk about some of the main key cryptocurrencies that we've been analyzing in the stuff. So a lot of really, really inf interesting information and just correlating everything together a little bit more for you. But if this passes above the 20 EMA, we could see a continuation rise up at its peak. As of more recently, we saw a very high push up to $10, but that candlestick and that volume for that day was super volatile, and it dropped all the way back down to $6.32. It's just been in this kind of consolidated space zone. So one of my favorite cryptocurrency YouTubers, you guys may or may not have heard of him. His name is Ivan on Tech. Love this guy's channel, love his content, very smart, and I think you guys should check him out as well. One of the key things that he likes to talk about is you have this big rise up, price drop, and then consolidated zone. Price just goes kind of steady. And it's in a lot of these projects where the price just kind of goes quiet. That's when you buy in because then it leads into another big bull run and then the price drop 
and then consolidate its own. So this could be a very good buying opportunity. Keep in mind, everything has oftentimes shown, not all the time, but oftentimes a correlation with that of Bitcoin. So OMG looking very positive for the day and also on that kind of brink. That's right there at that $4.40 range or so. We might see it push up to another range here. It looks like tests right around roughly the, it's gonna be about five bucks. You wanna keep an eye close to the $5 range for the next one on that. All right, let's go ahead and close that out. I'm gonna try and move through the rest of these pretty quickly for you guys. Again, if you guys are new and you've been enjoying the content so far, hit that like button. I don't know how many likes we can get on this video, but the more the better. Can we try to push for, say, 50 likes? If you guys haven't liked it yet, see if we can get to 50 likes. I appreciate all you guys being here. Take a look over band protocol. They are actually down just slightly at negative 0.33% and they are pushing dangerously close they actually had bounced off of for this day this support line that i had set up which is around the um 11 range just slightly below 11 dollars here and if it it's also below the 20 ema if it has a continuation down it's not going to be looking too pretty for this moving on off of Peter Brandt. Then we've also got, uh, let's close that one out too. Orchid right here. <clears throat> Taking a look at Orchid. This is actually some good news for Orchid. On the RSI, we have a decline in the volume moving down, but the RSI is starting to pull up. It's right past, if we actually have a continuation on right here, you can see it's just barely started to pass above the actual RSI, which is a good indicator that we're starting to have a trend reversal pattern. And the descending triangle that we have is also a bullish indicator. Previously, this was a descending uh, triangle. So, uh, sorry, yeah, I, this right now is a descending wedge. Before it was a descending triangle. So now that it's a descending wedge with that new lower point that's been dropped in back on September 3rd, this is a sign that the bulls are starting to fade off and a potential reversal taking place uh, this is also a better sign that it's not necessarily a big pump and dump format that took place way back here which a lot of people kind of were suggesting so we're seeing within this consolidated space right here of the triangle it is it actually bounced right off my line which i was very pleased with uh, as we've set that up and that was right off of about 40 cents here, currently at 38 cents. If it breaks above this, we could see another rally push up further. And on the potential for a very strong ride up past this before we hit another zone that we really need to kind of keep our eyes on, we could be looking at something right around the 0.382. Um, and that would be putting it at about 80 cents. Uh, which would be more than double where we're currently at and that could be a really good time to take into consideration if you need to take profits on some things always remember guys to try and uh, set up your stop losses try and hedge your risk as much as possible never invest more than what you're willing to risk to lose some of these projects projects sound absolutely amazing and some of the technical analysis can sound so spot on but these are by no means guarantees if anything, when you're watching YouTubers talk about this stuff and you hear all this information, you feel like you should make your decisions on all this stuff and you're gonna go all in, don't go all in. Unless you feel okay with losing it, do not go all in. What you should be taking into consideration is that these charts are oftentimes like 80% it looks more likely that it's gonna go this way. 70% more likely it's gonna go this way. It doesn't mean that it's guaranteed. If you had a dice and you're rolling the dice on the table, it's the same kind of thing, except in these instances, you look at the pattern, you say the sides of the dice, uh, eight out of 10 of these dice is the same number. The other two is a different number. So what are you gonna put your bet on, right? So taking that, uh, take that into consideration. And hopefully this was some really useful updated information for you guys. Again, if you did enjoy this, we're on the road trying to push to a thousand. Every sub helps us out so much. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and drop a comment down below. Let me know which one of these projects that I listed today is your personal favorite project that you are keeping an eye on right now. And maybe tell me why. So thank you guys so much, and I will see you in the next episode.